Me, I just had good feelings. I knew I was going to play a lot. I played with good players. I was a little bit nervous, but I played a few games back in Sweden before I, I went here. So, yeah, just yes, dream comes true and play, play the game. And they score! Niels Hoaglander, it's time to hand out the sweets. Yeah, dream comes true to score my first NHL goal in my first, first game. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was not a fancy goal, it was just a rebound. Guys started calling him like Huggy, but that's Quinn's name, or Quinn's nickname. I think his nickname now on the team is Hog. He's got a couple, but I, I mostly just call him Hogs. He got Hoggy, which gets confusing with Huggy a little bit on the bench, so I just call him uh, Hogs. Uh, Greener calls him The Hog. <laughs> so he's got, a, he's got a bunch. Yeah, we're gonna have to find like a, a permanent one for him. I think the unicycle thing is just for fun. I haven't seen Peter yet, but I will have a, like, have a match with him. It's him. We haven't had a battle yet or done it face to face, but uh, from the videos I've seen, he's, he's better. Sucks to say, but... <laughs> I think he's very similar to me, new to the language, doesn't want to do any harm to anyone. We need to get like comfortable before we can, I don't know, let loose a little bit because it's kind of hard to, to talk English, to get used to it. I, th I remember my first year I wasn't uh, as comfortable, I guess, now with the language. I think just a new country, uh, new language, new teammates, everything around that. On the ice, is, I used to my, play my style. Off the ice, he's, he's a little quieter. You gotta get him out of his shell a little bit. Obviously, it's his first year, he's a rookie, so it's gonna take a little bit of time, but he's just a kind of easygoing guy. Just likes to have fun, you know, laughs around the room and, and likes to joke around, but uh, when it comes game time, he's, he gets serious. It's easy to, to be close with the Swedish guy. Like PD, Iller, Queen has been amazing too. Brock, the younger guys. He fits in well. Guys like him. He's a funny guy. Uh, the more you get to know him, the more like relaxed, uh, the more funnier he gets. Awesome guy to be around. I mean, it's tough not having you know the ability to have him over for dinner or go out for dinners with him on the road. Luckily, he's got younger guys around him that you know he can relate to and go for walks around the city or something like that. But you know, in that sense, it's, it's tougher for a young guy to kind of gel with your teammates when you're not able to do other things. Ricky, let's go! My goal was to take a, take a spot in the team, so that was my biggest goal. I've never been one to have uh, expectations um, of players uh, until you know them. Uh, I think it's really important to kind of tailor the, the expectations down a little bit. There had been so much hype about them that I wanted to make sure we, we didn't put any extra pressure on them. When I talked to him, I told him the only, only expectation I want is for him to go out and play hard and enjoy it and have fun and, and play his game. And his game was hard not to notice from the beginning. He probably had a little bit of an advantage playing games, playing half a year has probably helped him coming over. And uh, I would say right from the first day of camp, we knew that this was a guy that we had to give a real look to and put him in a spot to have success. I have known Nils five years. When I lived in Stockholm and he played for AIK in Stockholm, yeah. I did some skill session with, with Nils at my ring, and I can see how his work ethic from game to practice, even if there was only him and me on the ice, he wanted to go all the time. Oh, come on. Come on. The things who stood out for me was how he handled game like situations with pressure. Uh, small areas, and then I was thinking about uh, this is going to be a really good fit for us when he played in the on a small ice surface. Uh. Oh, hey, there we go! Oh. Yeah, extremely strong work ethic. A lot of times work comes from just loving something. Uh, when you love what you do and you really have passion for something, it's, it's easy to work. He seems to have that. He loves coming to the rink, uh, loves being on the ice. And that energy is, uh, it rubs off on people and it, it's good to have a lot of those type of people around you. Yes! <laughs> He gains a lot of respect around the league and around our dressing room and just how hard he works and you know we want guys like that on our team.
Hoagland as the pressure stays on. Backhand shot by Hoagland, he scores! Competitive, probably the best way uh, to describe him. He's, he's a competitive player. I would probably use the word fearless as well. Hoaglander comes out to jar the puck. Oh, and then he pulled over Chris Russell. Hoaglander just skated right through him. Energetic, you know, those are the words that probably stand out for me where as fans you might you might think that skill might be the, the first word that comes out of your mouth. And uh, he is a skilled player. For all skilled players to have success in the league, they have to be ultra competitive and fearless. And he has those attributes in him. It doesn't matter if the, if the guy was, you know, 6'4". He, he, he was there. He was under the skin on the player all the time. And it was exactly what I saw when I came to, to a practice in Rogle. He, he, was, he was driving the practice. Derek Forbert, who went after the Canuck rookie, who a couple of shifts ago hit Forbert with a check that he didn't like. Derek Forbert, 6'4", 220. So we can see the size mismatch. It was Hoaglander, 5'9", 185. He plays fast, he's um, very strong in the park, he protects it well, he's uh, winning a lot of battles in the corners. He's not a big guy, but he's very strong in the park. I would just say like a um, power forward, but he's not that tall, but a power forward. I think that's what surprised a lot of guys, just how obviously quick he is, but how strong he is on the pucks, like you said, you know, how the ability to escape and make something out of nothing. Uh, on the ice was was really impressive to you know to a lot of the guys in the room and you know but I think the biggest thing is just his work ethic I think it just always comes back to that obviously you know he has a lot of skill and, but it's just how hard he works away from the puck to get it back or you know when he has it to to create space for himself is impressive yeah I always call him a little water bug uh, I don't know he's just always buzzing around there and always all over the puck Hoaglander again back on the attack it's Morrissey leans on him. Horvat trying to get it up front, bounced on top of the net, they score! Hoaglander batted it in, what a weird play, and rolled over the top of the net, and right there was Hoaglander to bat it past Hellebuck. You, you just got a feeling that Hoaglander was going to make something happen this entire shift. He, he, he played well with the puck under pressure. He, you can see it all, all, uh, around the boards, uh, around the net. Uh, he, he was so quick to turn up, turn away from the pressure to make a play. You can see it also when he can create the play and take a hit and then make a play. He is. He's coachable. He does make mistakes and he's and he's made the same mistake a few times. And I think we've had players in the past that the leash might not quite be as long because of his eagerness and his passion and his competitiveness. Uh, it's hard not to keep putting players like that on the, on the ice, especially when we're trying to fast track some of our young players to become top end guys. Yeah, I've seen some, some great players play against them and I learn every day and see see what they do too. I try to work hard, skate skate hard, do the hard work out there and I know if I do that the, the point's gonna come too so. Those are the type of players that we want to be Canucks quite honestly. You know it's one thing to have success individually in the league, it's another thing to have success as a team. You need to have players that are ultra competitive and, and fearless to go to hard places, not just to win regular season games, but ultimately to win playoff games. And, you know, he still has things that he needs to work on. He's had games where he probably hasn't, you know, quite honestly been that played that well, and, and we've stuck with him. A lot of it is because of that competitiveness and is easier to, to get better. The number of good hockey players you have in your team that are ultra competitive, the better you are. Whether he's on the first, second, third, fourth line, it doesn't matter to me. He's a good player that loves playing. We just got to make sure that he keeps getting better. I just told him to go and have fun and enjoy it. I think that's the biggest advice that anybody can give uh, is just to embrace it, enjoy the moment, just go and play and have fun. You know, you're in the NHL, that's what you dreamed about. I just told him, I'm here if you ever need anything. And I'm just tr always trying to give him advice. If I see something, small things to think about that I was told my first year from other guys and especially Marky. You said it's a different season without fans and I know when it's a normal season, there's a great fans here. One day I will see that too. A couple of walks, some fans run into me and say, oh, hi Nils, uh, fun to see you here. See them on Instagram, they, they text me there and wish me, wish me good luck. I will say I haven't put any goal for myself. Just stay in that position. I know it's hard to be there every day and I, I want to be there too, so I'm gonna do, do my best to, to be in that position.